feel about if it looks like. So I must put the feeling on. I must become that very thing. Because, you know, you, you know like, like some people, they say, cancel, cancel here. You know, I don't feel good this morning. You know, I, I feel like a headache is coming up, cancel, cancel. Uh, and sure enough, because they felt it, so shall it be. Because, see, feeling is an energy. And see, that energy will gravitate to you. And that feel, as you begin to speak it, because as you speak it, say, this is what I feel, you wooing it. And as you continue wooing that thing, that thing is going to come to you, and it's going to embrace you, and you're going to embrace you, and you're going to be upset. <laughs> Hello, somebody. So we see feeling and the body are connected. Put on the feeling, and the body will come. And that's all what Spirit is saying. Prepare me a body. And you know what I'm learning to wake up prophet? I said, I feel prosperous today. Someone asked me earlier when we first um, came on at 12 noon, they said, um, how are you doing today, prophet? I said, I feel wealthful. I am infinite prosperous. That's what I'm feeling. But what does it look like it? Is the situation saying the same thing? It doesn't have to say, but I'm feeling it because I am that very thing. And because I'm feeling it, I'm wooing it to me, so shall it be. This is the law of the spirit. Yes. Uh, when we're talking about feeling, it comes to me the scripture about putting on the garment of praise for the spirit mm. of heaviness. And see, there is a putting on that God is telling us to assume and to take. He wants us to take action in the spirit and actually just put the feeling. Put the feeling. If you don't, if you say you're not feeling good and you have no energy or whatever, go into praise. You're taking the action. And as you do that, it comes more and more upon you. So why not do that? Why not take that spirit of feeling of whatever you want and, and just let it fit on you, just like clothing, so that you will become it. That's right. So they must put it on in order to become it. And you know, like, like as long as you have that outfit and that closet hanging up, it's not going to do you anything. But as soon as you put it on, you begin to say, okay, now I can see how it really looks on me. You can have the imagination. You say, oh, it may look this way. It may be too snug around here or too big around here. But once you put it on, you get the true picture. And spirit is saying today, put me on. Yes. Put that feel good spirit on so that you can feel me, so that you can possess me, so that you can have me. It's only in the putting on that you can have it and possess it. And this is what we see Jacob did in the scriptures when he came to his father because his father was blind. And his father gave his eldest brother a command, told him to go and prepare me venison. But what Jacob did, because he was listening to spirit, he began to put it on and began to act. He said, come close. And see, when they say you got to showcase, don't, don't get fearful. Because see, as long as Jacob was afar off talking to his father, it was okay. But when the father said, come close so that I may feel thee, oh God, oh, oh God. See, there could have been some indecisiveness. There could have been some fear there. There could have been, oh God, you know, oh, okay, this is just a game. No, no, no. You got to know that this is not a game I'm playing. This is real. I am that very thing. You got to know it so much until they can feel it. But you know, I, I, I may not look the part. You got to feel, you see, I am the part. Because it's all about me anyway. I am that. And even though Jacob was not in the natural, the eldest, but he felt like the eldest and he reaped the eldest blessing. And this is what we got to get into church. Began to becoming that very thing that God has called us to walk into. Because the, I just feel by the Spirit that the blessings are lingering in the heavens and they are sure, but you got to reach up and lay claim to it and say that I am that. I'll be that. Now, the prophet has already said it, so I'll be that. Well, but, but, but I, I don't feel like, 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 like I should have that. I am that. Because God said it. And because God said it, so be it. Because see, you're in the earth saying the amen to what God has already said in the heavens. That's, That's the only purpose that you have in this earth. You're here to say the amen. You're here to become that very thing that the God has already declared in the heavens. Yes. So what is happening is that we are not saying the same thing or coming into agreement of what the Spirit has already said in the heavens. And this is where there is that widening of the gap. This is why, like, God is saying something, you are here, and God is here. Spirit is saying something, and you, man, is saying something else. But if we can ever come 
into agreement, God is sin and heaven, so that the heavens and the earth may come together and come into agreement. Then we're going to see the manifestation. And this is why people of God, oh God, thank you, Jesus, that even in Romans it said that all of creation is in groaning. Why is creation in groaning? Now, spirit has wrapped itself in this earth. But why is creation in groaning? It's because earth is not saying the same thing that heaven is saying. Earth wanting and desiring to come back into oneness with her first estate. But because earth is not, hello man, earth, you are not saying what heaven is saying. There's a division. There's a gap. But thanks be to God that God is speaking to his prophets. And the prophet is the one that's standing the gap. Say, so yes, there has been a breach. Yes, there has been a gap. But God sets his man, his woman, his prophetess in the middle and began to pull it together and to bring that oneness. Yes. This is why you are here today, people of God, those of you that are in this sanctuary. This is why you are here, those of you that are in the chat room today. We have 86 people in the chat room today. You are here to let you know that the gap must be brought back together again. Where it must have been a breach, there's a coming together again. There's a sewing up. And once that gap has brought there, you're not going to know where it was ripped, where it was torn apart. At. It's going to all be one because it's all God. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, continue reading. The importance of meditation. By meditation, you can be what you envision. Meditation, if you are uncomfortable with the word because it suggests Eastern religions or mysticism, you can use prayer is the process by which you put your mind in a state where you are open to receive God's word in spirit. When you meditate, you become a two-way radio with ah, the receiver up. turned up as high as it will go. And when you can let go of intellect and stop trying to analyze the experience, when you can stop being and start becoming one with God, then you will feel some amazing insights and visions into your mind. Wow. Okay, but I want you to read also because, um, give this trip to Joshua 1 and 8. Because, see, there's a key uh, that happens. It's very important when you meditate. Things begin to come into right divine order. So just read Joshua 1 and 8. You have it? If yes, not, Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Wow. Now, I'm going to read this um, in the Living Bible. It says, and I like to see what it says in the Living Bible. It says, constantly. So what that tells me, I mean, it just can't be off and on. It has to be a continual basis. It has to be a continual thing that you are doing. It says, constantly remind the people about these laws and you yourself must think about them every day, every night, so that you will be sure to obey all of them, for only then will you succeed. Only then will you succeed. But you got to constantly remind yourself, put yourself in remembrance that you are thinking on these laws. What is the laws of God? What has God said about this is what you got to think about? Now, I'm not going to be concerned. You know something? Um, well, you know, the, the, my boss, um, they're laying off people. Now, I'm going to be next. I can't think about that. You know, um, little Johnny is acting all up, and, and, and he's doing bad. And I can't think about that right now. Well, 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 well you know something? Um, um, I'm two months behind in my mortgage, and I don't know what's getting ready to take place. I can't think about that right now. But the scripture said, if I constantly remind the people about these laws, no, let me take a break. If I constantly remind myself, Deborah, yes. and I want you to put yourself in the picture, because it's one thing I'm reading it uh, as, as a third person, but I want you to put yourself in the picture. So if I constantly remind Deborah, remind me of these laws, that I must think about them every day and every night so that you will, so that I, so that Deborah will be sure to obey them, all of them, for only then will I succeed. So if I want success in my life, I got to think about these laws. These laws must be on my mind all the time. I can't allow a moment to lapse in my day or my night to not to have these laws on my mind. And that law is that I am the head and not the tail. Hello, somebody. That I am the prosperous one. I am who God says I am. 
The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall have no want or need for anything. Okay, I don't have no needs. There's no needs, no wants in my life because.